so Gary, it occurs to me um, that we've been doing these dialogues, and of course we haven't required any instruction manual for the dialogues, or it hasn't required us to come to some sort of pre-given destination, destination or definition for the dialogues, but I thought it might be useful to talk about uh, what dialogue is and why it's such a useful tool. I found it to be a very useful tool in my own uh, path, and it's not one I see recommended very often. Yeah, it's an interesting um, pedagogical approach, if I can use that word, that um, I think as we found in the course of doing these discussions, that they aren't pre-rehearsed. We don't come up with anything ahead of time, any script to follow. And yet you and I have both found that there's a lot of uh, learning takes place just by virtue of just opening up our own spaces and let what manifests manifest. And out of that sharing comes something better than either one of us could have, I'll say for myself, I certainly couldn't have thought it up. Uh, and so you see, you, this is kind of a learning process. It's really uh, a great practice to be open enough that you don't encumber what's coming out of you and you just let it respond to the gestalt of the energy that's unfolding at that time. There's no scripting, no organizing, I shouldn't say this, I shouldn't say that. It just comes out. Right, and I mean, so somebody could say, oh, well, you know, that's exactly what people do in uh, psychoanalysis. Or, uh, but there's something qualitatively different about real dialogue. For, so, in, you know, if you're going into psychoanalysis, which is not something I'm, I'm criticizing, but then there's a hierarchical difference between the patient and the analyst. Well, absolutely, and there's, there's also a template. I mean, yeah. this, this, the psychoanalyst comes in with, a, here's a box yeah. that I'm going to put you in, I've been trained as a Freudian or a Jungian or whatever, transpersonal, and this is my box I have for you. And so I listen to what you're saying to me with this template. And I said, well, this fits in here, and this fits in there, and this fits in there. And so that's my response to you is out of that you know, template. I don't give the space for you to be empty and for also for me to be not have a template. And if you don't have a template as a psychoanalyst, then something else comes out that's very different. You know, there are training people on the West Coast. It's a big group in San Francisco. I saw some last week who are very much training people to be non-dual psychotherapists. The idea being just get the just get out of the way mm -hmm. and just don't be there. Just be empty and like we're doing, just see what comes up. It's astonishing what can come up. Well, that's what's so beautiful is, is that then when you're engaged in the dialogue, it's really a practice of emptiness because yeah. Yeah. you're just practicing being empty instead of saying, well, he's going to say this, then so I should say that. It's a kind of really helpful goad mm -hmm. towards being empty mm -hmm. instead of a goad towards coming up with something to say. It's right. the exact opposite of that. Right. Um, and I think one of the benefits of it is this is a kind of search engine for finding those things that you are having trouble emptying. Um, and so it kind of it goes right to the place where you may be holding on to something or you're, you have queries about something instead of coming and kind of rehearsing about what it is that you should talk about or adopting a teaching and then incorporating that teaching right. into your practice, which all have virtues. But I've found that the sort of clarity and, and work of dialogue, which in a more or less peer-to-peer -peer way, uh, with mutual respect and mutual emptiness, I don't know how you know anything else could have gotten me through a lot of the things that I went through. Yeah. Well, you said it takes um, some practice with it. I mean, to trust, in fact, that what comes out of emptiness will be okay. And as you start to trust, and you say, "Well, I'll just, I'll let this, whatever this next thing going to come out, I'll just let this come out," and it comes out, and say, "Well, that's that's really good. That's pretty cool." And then so you begin to trust that process, and to where you begin to trust it completely, and you get to where you don't ever, in you know intercalate your discussion. It just comes out as it comes out and it's much more fluid, it's much more insightful, it's it's uh, much more useful than what we had done if we had scripted it, tried to manage it, make sure the right thing instead of the wrong thing. And you talked about levels. I think it's very important if you're going to have a dialogue to not have a dialogue. I mean you somehow got to be you know at the same level and I really mean it. That you're actually equally open to whatever the other person has to say and let, you're just letting it dance however it dances. I also found that, that exchanging money makes a big difference. I mean, if you pay me, you know, pick in New York City, $200, $300 an hour to talk to me, 
then that really does change our relationship. Yeah, but let's get past this. <laughs> I, I want, there's something I need to talk to you about. And like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> time. I see. We're, we're time. Time is up. Time is up. Oh, we didn't get to it. Yeah, so there's no free chance. I mean, as soon as you put money on the table and put hierarchy on the table, and I'm a, I am a learned person. I'm a, you know, this is my degree from Columbia, whatever, and you know, you're coming in to see me, then that's a whole different thing. And how you can get an open, free, flowing exchange of information is almost impossible in that situation. You just can't do it. No, but that's what's interesting is then from an infrastructural point of view, then this is why actual dialogue itself seems to be almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have any infrastructure for people just to meet up as equals, mm -hmm. practice emptiness, right. and exchange where they are, right. which is in oneness. Right. Um, but we can imagine some scenarios where that could be at least cultivated. Right. right? Um, we've talked a little bit about this idea of just sort of peer-to-peer -peer dialogue using web tools to help mm -hmm. organize getting people together to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're quite right that if it just becomes the specialty of a couple of people, then supply and demand, let's say somebody becomes really great at dialogue. Let's say right. Gary Weber becomes famous for, you know, his dialogue method. And then, uh, yeah, exactly, you're rolling your eyes, but then all of a sudden, <laughs> successful no, teacher no. <laughs> then gets too many people. And so then you say, uh, 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 that's what I'm saying, I'm not, then they use, uh, you know, they use uh, money Say okay, well, I can't see everybody every day, so I'll make it three hundred dollars. I'll make it oh, three hundred fifty dollars exactly. And they do. And and so there has to be something to deal with supply and demand. But the premise is is that this, is that we're all in that position where we can be ready to give emptiness and dialogue to another person right. if we're willing. Right. And so as long as it becomes something that is a specialty of somebody, then we're going to have a supply and demand problem. But if people begin practicing it on their own, right, without needing to be certified through any academy or justified by anything, but just practicing it, you know, as Mark and I did, you know, some, some years ago, then pretty soon you're going to be able to see that we all have somebody that if we want to, we can go to and do this. Right. So, I mean, it might be worth thinking about what some protocols for that would be. Yeah, well, I mean, t to me, the, the fascinating thing is you can, you can feel in yourself if you're being authentic. Uh -huh. I mean, you can feel as soon as you move into a script, into, a, oh, he said something, and I'm this, and I'm, you can just feel how subtle and how quick that shift is, and yeah. how the energy inside changes. Yeah. So it isn't like you need any, any kind of a, a monitor, a hall monitor, to watch and see if you're being authentic or not. You know yourself. You are that hall monitor. You, you are the hall <laughs> monitor. You know you're being inauthentic, and yeah. you can feel that. And the other person can feel it too. As soon as you change the structure, you change money, you get somebody gets this way, somebody. but, but that, that whole—it's just so crazy. And, and people will get all excited about themselves, and and if they they get money, they're like, whoa, I can get more money. Well, this guy's getting more money than I am, so I want even more money than he gets, and the whole thing builds crazy. And then you're no longer authentic. You stop being in the dialogue, and you are totally different. Dialogue shuts down. It's not dialogue. It's a monologue. So the commitment has to be this commitment to. Total emptiness. Authenticity. Yeah. Complete authenticity. No barriers, no interruptions, no, nothing, nobody intermediating anything that comes out. It's just complete, blah, whatever comes out of the great emptiness is what Spitz said. Well then, see, because most of the time, even in the philosophical tradition, a lot of the times we think of dialogue as people exchanging knowledge. Mm. But in fact, mm. what you're pointing to is the fact that what we're doing is creating the conditions of not knowing. Mm -hmm. The dialogue mm -hmm. is a tool for not knowing. Absolutely. The critical thing, we have, have to not know. We both have to not know what we're going to say. Not know our stance on the subject. And just let whatever comes out come out of that not knowing space. Absolutely. And when you're committed to not knowing, then even when you know and you fall into say a script of some kind mm -hmm. which is sort of inevitable is mm -hmm. going to happen then the other person is there precisely to call out mm -hmm. the script and say well you know it feels like I mean you don't have to say it feels like a script but there are many ways to mm -hmm. respond so it feels like that is a like widely available like if this were a software right mm -hmm. that was free mm -hmm. and widely available 
by open, which open source so open speak. source dialogue exactly yeah. by which people could pursue uh, awakening yeah. beyond thought yeah. then you know it would be getting downloaded at a rate of that's you know, right That'd be and good. and I, I have a feeling that it's because it's right in front of us that we don't see that it's the most powerful tool that we have at our disposal like it also people are afraid to trust they can just say what comes out and, and let it go out there yeah they aren't worried that they Oh my goodness, what are they going to think of me if I say this thing or that thing? And you've got to get to the place where you can trust that, be open to it, and if you can feel that inauthenticity, that scripting coming in, you can just let go of it. You can just surrender that. And as you do, then openness manifests.